Thank you very much, Chancellor Ward. I think that uh, you nailed a number of things right on the head, and I'm excited to hear about the enthusiasm about this new scholarship of engagement. Uh, also excited to say that this is something on campus that is uh, being talked a lot about, and in fact, I think the rest of this year during the centennial celebration, you'll be seeing other events happen and more discussions, even all the way up to the divisional committees, to talk about how we can do a better job on our campus of rewarding pre-tenure faculty, post-tenure faculty for their engaged scholarship in all forms. So it is my distinct pleasure now to introduce John and Tasha Morgage as our next speakers to share with us their vision for the center, reflect on their own civic engagement ideals, and their thoughts on the role of higher education in preparing students to become engaged citizens and leaders of the future. It's difficult for me to express the gratitude that all of us feel for both Tasha and John's generosity in establishing the Morgage Center for Public Service. Their generous endowment in 1984 has ensured that the center has both operating funds and a home in, in the renovated historic Red Gym and Armory. Over the past 15 years, the center has built upon the rich tradition of service, is captured by the Wisconsin idea, and has played a vital role in educating students, preparing them to fulfill their social and civic obligations as future citizens and leaders. Tasha and John have continued to support and invest in the Mortgage Center and in 2009 established the five-year, $5 million Mortgage Challenge Match to encourage faculty and staff to bring new funding to the university to support service, service learning, and community-based research. This generous gift has helped the center continue to grow its endowment and its programs as it has grown in stature, visibility, and impact. As a 1955 graduate of the School of Education, Tasha has always had a passion for service learning, for learning, teaching, and service. Although retired from her early career as a teacher, I understand that she continues to volunteer as a tutor for young school children near her home in Northern California. As a 1955 graduate of the School of Business, John continues to advance his vision for bringing community and the campus together through technology and business in many ways. And I think here is a perfect example of being in this facility of John and Tasha's vision together of how they have brought all of us together. John and Tasha's investment in the center has built a bridge between community and campus, linking town and gown, allowing students, staff, faculty, and community partners to truly experience the Wisconsin idea. Please join me in welcoming John and Tasha Morgridge. Often a copied idea is better than an original idea. Uh, certainly, Tasha and I have, uh, have used that strategy often. As a businessman, you know, I, I had a uh, kind of a policy that there were uh, three levels of successful programs. There were successful programs that happened without your interference, which you subsequently took credit for. Uh, most of those are 100% uh, successful. Uh, the second set, uh, which has a slightly higher risk, are copy programs. You observe something that works, and you say, you know, we could probably duplicate that. Uh, and then a third is the most risky one, where you actually conceive a new or very different idea. Uh, those tend to be high risk, and uh, uh, CEOs uh, usually can, can, other than perhaps age, come to their demise on those kinds of undertakings. Not that you shouldn't do them, it's just that they're very high risk. The majority of the programs that we've done here at Wisconsin uh, have been copy programs, programs that we have observed uh, somewhere else, many at Stanford, and, uh, and have brought here. Now, the advantage of those is that they've already worked through a lot of the potential uh, screening of failure, so that you start on a basis that's more secure. Uh, the second is that you can address and correct, perhaps, uh, mistakes that the, the initial round made that, 
that you can improve upon and implement site slightly differently. Uh, there's also a, a great advantage is if you take that idea and do it somewhere else. Because then people actually think it's an original idea. <laughs> and you get credit for an original idea when actually you're just copying some idea that's been implemented somewhere else. Uh, all of those certainly play into the uh, things that we've enjoyed doing here in Wisconsin. Uh, there are other ingredients that are important, and uh, David touched on some of them. Certainly timing and the climate of the situation is very important. Uh, the, uh, it's also important that you find the right resources, or that the right resources exist for it. And that was true uh, some of the names have been mentioned of the people that were here who, who not only had part of this vision or this vision, but were willing to invest in it and be part of it going forward. You know, it's not just a coincidence that at the time that we uh, made this gift that uh, we, uh, that Tasha was chair of the Haas Center at, uh, at Stanford. All of that played into our, our decision to, uh, to go ahead and, and do this. Oh, and yes, last, uh, the importance of infrastructure. Uh, the infra, you know, there's a lot of infrastructure in a university, and the key is to find ways to capitalize off of what already exists and, and leverage that as a resource. And if you look at uh, our investments here at Madison, many of them have that quality uh, that we're leveraging off of, uh, off of that uh, uh, res the, the in-being in resource and infrastructure. Uh, as was mentioned, we graduated in the 50s. Uh, and uh, we, it was a time when the campus wasn't liberal, it was communist. Uh, so it's actually made quite a bit of progress since then. I, no, I, I now understand a recent survey said we're liberal, uh, but uh, when I was a kid coming here, we were it was red. It was red. Uh, and to David's point, uh, you know, it was the boundaries of the state, or the boundaries of the universities, are the uh, of the university are the boundaries of the state. And that with good measure, looking back on the history of the land grants and the, and the focus of the land grants, the agricultural environment that this was a part of. Uh, so that was understandable. Uh, Tasha's parents actually thought the United States was the boundaries, uh, that the state of Wisconsin were the boundaries of the United States. And, it took them, they made very few trips across the border. Uh, so that was the mindset. And for us students, you know, an international trip was the annual uh, drive to Florida, uh, where people spoke a, a version of our language, but not identically the same. And some of the food was kind of funny. And uh, so that was our international experience. So much has changed since then, you know, uh, where now uh, a quarter of our graduate, undergraduates, I guess, make an uh, overseas uh, trip. So I think it is fitting at this point to take on this uh, new mantra of uh, that, uh, that Wisconsin is, a, uh, is without borders and that the borders extend not only to Madison, not only to Milwaukee, maybe, but actually uh, throughout the world. So uh, it's a great vision and one that I uh, look forward to being part of going forward. And with that, I'll turn it over to my wife. <laughs>